Hello and welcome back to Empire of the Sun. And this is the turn that Yala, uh, this is the combat resolution phase of uh, turn two, card one. And remember, we have two combats here and here. Okay. So the first thing the uh, allies have to do is roll intelligence. And if you remember, rolling intelligence means that they go up here and they look at the, I use this uh, card as the event, hence the intelligence condition. EC is seven, so he has to roll seven or less. I didn't cross any um, any uh, allied ZOI air airs in terms of influence, so um, the, I don't. He doesn't get the minus two modifier, ERM modifier, so he has to uh, roll a seven or less in order to see this attack coming. So he's rolling intelligence, and he rolls a five, and so he does see this attack coming. So it's not a surprise. Okay, he activates. Just lean up, activates the central pack, central Pacific Air Divisions, and technically you can activate up to six units because three here plus three there gives him six units to activate. But he activates only one. Okay, that's this air unit here. If he flies out here, to the, he has he can make three hops from here to here to the to wake. So he goes to wake. Okay. And here, there is a small error here. Uh, my, I think my opponent made an error because he, uh, it's, this is supposed to be fighting in this battle here. This is the battle hex. Uh, this and this is not, are not battle hexes. I just marked this to show that these are the guys who are attacking this guy. So I think my opponent made a mistake. He thought this is the battle hex. So one, two, three, four, five. It reaches the battle hex. But no, the battle hex is actually here. So it's actually one, two, three. Four, five, six, well short. So technically speaking, I think the seventh air force should not be here. It, sh it should not be allowed to come out here. If we can't reach the battle pack, it should really go back to Pearl Harbor. Okay. So all right. So let's resolve battle A. And battle A is uh, okay. So he sees that the Japanese have twenty, and the Allies have four plus four equals eight. So he says. It's not quite like that, as we know. It's supposed to be just four because the other air unit that should really be part of the battle. Um, but if we look at the result, the result is three seven. And if we look, if we assume that the um, we always have the attacker roll first, so the Japanese roll is three, Japanese roll is three, Allied roll is seven. So the Allied result, the Allies get a full result one. So it actually inflicts four points of damage, which isn't enough to harm either this or this, because it's only ten. And the the Japanese roll is tw is um, is seven. Uh, sorry, is three. Excuse me. And three up here is one half result. So that should be um, enough. I think what happens is that. Uh, he says it's no effect. It's not quite true. I think it's half result, hence this has to be flipped. I think this has to, to flip like this, all right? Okay, so there's been losses here. He doesn't hit me, but I can really hit him. Okay. Oh, wait. No, no, sorry. Excuse me. I had it the other way around. Sorry. I had it the other way around. Uh, the Japanese are the attackers. I rolled a three. The allies rolled a seven. The allies have a full result. Four. He can't hurt me. I rolled a three. Wait, that, that is right. Sorry, sorry, that's one half result. So one half result of 10 plus 10 is 20. Half result, I should flip this. That's right, sorry. Okay, so that should be a flip. I think my opponent made a mistake there. So I'm going to make a note of that and tell my opponent uh, when he resolved that he resolved that interaction. Okay, now we go to this battle here, which is the big one. Okay, so this one is battle B. And here, I think the best thing for us to do is to bring up all these guys up here over by over by the air naval combat results table because it is an interesting result. Okay, and so all these guys will oops, all these guys go out. They also go up here. Uh, okay. 
All right, so here we are at the naval combat table. So the results are rather interesting. So let's see how many factors the allies have. The allies have how many attack factors? Okay, so remember, oops, the Marine Brigade should not have come with us. Okay, that should have lived left behind because he isn't part of the, uh, the air combat or naval and air combat. Pull this up for the Japanese. Okay, notice what happens here. The Allies have, if you fact, if you remember, the card has a condition. The card has a condition that says that all Allied carrier units, uh, yeah. U.S. aircraft carrier naval units have their attack strength reduced by two. Okay, remember that from before. You played that card. And so this, instead of being 12, is actually 10. So it's 10, 20, 35, 35 plus 15 is 50. So there are 50 allied, uh, 50 allied uh, uh, naval factors. And the Japanese have uh, 36. This is 36. Plus 17, 53. So 53 Jap versus 50 Allies. Okay? Right? And interestingly enough, ha, huh, he rolls a double nine. Okay, he rolls a double nine. Okay, the Allies roll nine, the Japanese roll nine. So they, are, they both hit, uh, inflict critical hits. Okay? They both achieve the critical hits so right here. So there are full result. Allies inflict 50 points of damage against the Japanese. Japanese inflict 53 points of damage. Um, damage on the allies. All right. The way this works is the way this normally works is if we had not rolled a critical hit, if we had not rolled a critical hit, the rules say that when you distribute hits throughout your uh, you know on your enemy and when you absorb hits from enemy action, all undamaged uh, ships have to take or undamaged units must take a hit first. Before any undamaged hits, any undamaged uh, forces take hits. So technically speaking, if he had struck me and he struck me with 50, okay, 50 for us would be like, okay, so this guy flips 12, 24, 36, 36 plus 14 is 50, right? Okay, then that's it. So that's He would have struck me for 50. So all my carriers would have survived, albeit they'd be damaged. I strike him for 53. I would have uh, flipped this 12, flip this for 24, flip this for 36, 36, 36 plus 8 is 44, 44 uh, plus 8. Okay, now I can hit any of the uh, any of the ships here because they're all damaged. And if I can, I'd like to be able to hit one of the carriers and the sink it. But I can't because I don't have enough. I don't have enough units. I don't have enough uh, hits. I have. I've been 12, 24, 36, 30, 44. I have 53. I've been 44 hits, so I only have nine to go. So the only thing I can really hit in the sink is either of these cruisers. So they will die. That. All right. So if I, we had not done, um, if we had not had a critical hit, that was what would happen. But we did have a critical hit. So what happens now? With the critical hit, the the um, the rules change very slightly, okay. And this is what or what makes this uh, particular um, combat interesting because we did uh, we had double critical hits. We hit him and he hit us, okay. <coughs> if you remember, a critical hit before used to mean that if you were too weak normally to damage your enemy, um, then you could score a hit. You could flip him anyway because of a critical hit. That's only one aspect of a critical hit. The other aspect of a critical hit is that if you score a critical hit on your opponent, that means you don't have to follow that rule of everybody having to flip first. That all undamaged units have to be flipped first. If our damaged units flip first. So I can hit him, okay, with 53 hits. I can actually hit this guy for 12, hit this guy for 12. Then instead of hitting this for another 12 and hitting this for an 8, what I can do is I can hit this guy again for 12. And oh so sorry. Uh yeah. And I can hit him, sink him, hit this guy, sink him. So now he's lost all of his carriers, got all of his air strength. Similarly, with me, he can do the same thing. He has 50 hits on me, 
And because of the critical hit, okay, he doesn't have to flip all four. He has to just, he, he, he can choose to hit here. He can choose to hit and sink this with Kagi and hit this and sink this to the Shokaku, okay? So this is actually an extremely bloody battle. We lost a lot of our carrier strength. The Lexington, the Enterprise, the Americans, the Akagi, the Shokaku, the Japanese, okay? But I think that this works out worked out well for um, the um, the Allied player, me. Oh, sorry, the Japanese player, me, because I destroyed his carriers, and destroying his carriers actually carried a one political will penalty um, that was going to be assessed at the end of the turn because uh, because of um, no, that's the rules. Okay, then which leaves him only these three U.S. ships left. This guy, this guy, this guy. And if it, somehow I can sink all these three ships before the end of the turn, he takes another critical hit. I'm uh, sorry, another, critical hit, another political will hit. So that's two political will hits. But right now, just one. Okay? So that's what happened during the combat. Very, very bloody. We lost the Akagi and the Shikaku. And we were able to sink both the Enterprise and the Lexington. Okay? Eventually, the, the bad thing is, is that over time, the Americans will be able to rebuild the Lexington and the Enterprise because if you notice, they're not yellow dot units, so they will be able to build this. They'll be able to rebuild these CVs over time. It'll take a long time because the Americans only really get like one or two naval units in place it's a game. And uh, we cannot rebuild the Akaki and Shokaku because they have yellow dots on them, so they're lost forever. But I think that it's worth, uh, as a Japanese player, I think it's worth the loss because we were able to sink the U.S. carriers and inflict a um, inflict a hit, inflict a, a political will, a political will hit on our opponents that's going to be very um, uh, well, hopefully will be the difference of winning and losing this game. So that's what happened. These guys died, these guys died, and these are left, that's left. And then what I did was at the end was I uh, I did a uh, uh, post battle movement to move the to move the carriers back where they came from, etc. And then um, and then we'll await his card play. Okay, so I'll leave it here. I'll leave the, this. Um, I'll leave this uh, situation here, and we'll await our opponent's uh, reply. Okay, because it's now his card turn, and that's it. Just to show you the extremely bloody battle in the Pacific, where we lost two of our three carriers, and he lost all of his carriers. So I think that's good news for the Japanese. I think it was a victory for us. And hopefully, you know, going forward, we'll have more victories to come. All right? So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for listening.